Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our regular pitching preview show with Joe Dobby from OffshoreInsiders.com. Right now, we're going to take a look at the pitching matchups for Friday, May 8th. Joe Dobby, how's everything going in baseball at OffshoreInsiders.com? Fantastic. Sometimes we'll record this a little bit in advance, but as we follow this coming off a 4-0 sweep in uh, nice. baseball, all underdogs and NBA were on fire as well. Well, maybe on Friday you will recommend to your clients to once again fade Jared Weaver. I don't know if that's something you've been doing all year long, but, uh, you know, he's yeah. not just like a little bit worse than he was a few years ago. He might be one of the worst pitchers in baseball now, right? Now he's going to be at home against Houston, a winning team, prolific offense against righties. Uh, what do you think? Weaver gets yeah. hit hard here? I would agree. He's got that 6.29 ERA, 45 hits. Most importantly, he's given up eight home runs. So he is he's getting drilled. Uh, luckily, he's still kind of got that name. So you're going to get value. But, yeah, when you have a guy who has a good reputation and is clearly overvalued in Las Vegas and offshore, there's nothing to argue about. Nothing to argue about what you just said. So you expect him to get hit again, probably. Yes, Okay. absolutely. Absolutely. And then we have uh, Gio Gonzalez, and uh, he is um, off of an excellent start, and maybe uh, he is turning a corner, about to have a, a good run of starts here, and uh, Stultz is much less impressive on the other side for Atlanta. Do you think that uh, Washington has a major starting pitching edge here and that uh, you know Washington will be a favorite in this one, but uh, maybe they'll be uh, not too much, much of a favorite to not have value? What do you think? This is where my research, it's roughly around the 30th game or so, which we're approaching, where mm -hmm. these teams that had so much hype and underachieved a little bit really start to turn it on so I do think that this might be the time to start betting on Washington and uh, Gio Gonzalez no question he's a stud pitcher he's not just some Johnny come lately right. so I do think it might be about the time that at the very least to stop betting against Washington and, and their stud pitchers such as Gio Gonzalez so if anything yeah I think it's going to start going in the other direction Washington and Gonzalez will be good bets. All right, and then in Toronto, Wade Miley and Aaron Sanchez. And Aaron Sanchez, you know, one of these youngsters with a lot of potential, but uh, you can't give up that many walks in the major leagues and have success. I don't care who you are. Uh, he's going to be at home, you know, Hitters Park against Boston. Nice lineup this year. And, uh, you know, Wade Miley on the other side, his last start was, was decent, but before that he was getting hit. Do we think that, do we expect just fireworks here and maybe an over with Sanchez against Miley, or do we think that Miley will have another good start? Maybe Boston is uh, the way, it will be the way to go. Boston certainly fits into that category that I just said about Washington. They're mm -hmm. a team that had so much hype in the offseason. They've obviously been a disappointment so far, but I don't think that, you know, that the pressure, as I said, we're approaching really about that demarcation point where Boston should start turning it around. Sanchez, one of these guys who's having trouble finding the plate, and often what these young pitchers do is they wind up throwing more fastballs to get it over the plate, and now they're facing a Boston team, albeit an underachieving offense, but one heck of an offense, and might be a great situation to start teeing off on Sanchez, who might wind up throwing a lot more fastballs to uh, overcome his control problems. I think Boston's probably in a good situation. And then you always have some interesting things to say about uh, pitchers who are facing the same team two times in a row, and we will have that uh, with uh, with David Price, right? He shut down KC last game, which is, you know, KC is uh, one of the better teams in baseball so far, and certainly they're going to, uh, you know, wind up being that way over the long haul, even if they regress a bit. Can he, will he do it again is the big question. Do you think that uh, we can expect another big start from Price or will Casey, you know, make adjustments? Maybe we expect uh, different results here. Now that theory really applies a lot more to decent pitchers who may be in their first start right. ever against a team or the first start in a while or their first start that year had some success, not to a pitcher of the caliber of David Price. Price is obviously a, a stud. As you said, he's coming off a five hitter against Kansas City. Tough to go against him. You know, I do like to try to find situations where great pitchers are good go against because of the value situation. Not sure it really jumps out at me here, though. Okay, and then talking about pitchers not quite on the level of David Price, we're going to have Jason Marquis and Hector Noisi in Cincinnati White Sox. You know, uh, any reason to believe that both these guys won't get hit if they do? I guess you got to think that the over will happen, even though the over will probably be, you know, nine and a half will price here, maybe even 10. But, you know, if they both get crushed or they both give up four runs in the first five innings, that still might have value. What do we expect from this game? Mark, he's certainly a longtime veteran, but he has been getting drilled as of late, especially over his last two starts. And I do think he's a big go against, and you're, you're correct. It's going to be a very high-scoring game, and even though 
the total's going to be high, probably a high percentage play to go with the over. All right, and then another pitching matchup where both pitchers faced the uh, the opposing team last start. Uh, this might be a little bit more difficult to handicap than the David Price start is uh, is Waka and Liriano, uh, St. Louis at Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, both of them pitched against the other team in their last start. Both of them pitched pretty well. It was a very low-scoring game. Uh, do we expect a repeat of that? If so, then, uh, you know, maybe just a no-brainer under here. If not, do we which, which do we expect uh, to struggle more than the other? I wouldn't call it a no-brainer under because, you know, there's going to be a low total. But as far as maybe f fading it, where a lot of times I do like to bet low totals to go over the total. Uh, tough situation here. Waka, four of his uh, five starts have been excellent starts. He's given up one or fewer runs in four starts this year. But Lariano has done very well to the quality bats of the Cardinals given up only 31 hits in 51 innings against St. Louis. So, again, I, I can't really do what my – kind of where I usually find the advantages is betting low totals over the total, but this is not a, a good situation. And if anything, you're, you're right, probably even despite – the fact that you got two good pitchers here, it will go under the total. And then I want to wrap up my questioning by asking you about uh, Tim Linsum. Always an interesting guy <laughs> to ask about. Overall on the year, numbers not that bad, but uh, usually when he has a great game, he follows it up with with a game that's uh, that's not that great. He is coming off an awesome start, but you know, so maybe that means that he's due to uh, get knocked around a little bit by Miami. Miami doesn't have the most awesome lineup in the world, though, and San Francisco, of course, can be very friendly to pitchers. What do you think we should expect from Tim Linscombe here? In the case of Linscombe, it's not so much that he's become the predictably unpredictable pitcher since he, he was obviously, for about a six-year period, one of the most dominant pitchers in baseball. That hasn't been the case the last few years, but I, don't, I haven't really observed that he's predictably unpredictable. He follows up a great outing with a bad outing, just the opposite, that he's been streaky as heck. He can mm -hmm. go a five-game stretch where he looks like the old Tim Linscombe and then all of a sudden, just when you, you think about it, then he, he does start to slump in the other direction. But right now, while Linsicum's pitching well, I think he's somebody to uh, to go with. All right. So he might even uh, we might even expect him to have a, a relatively good start against Miami once again here. Yes. I, I don't know if, the, you know, the old Tim Linsicum, if he's necessarily found the fountain of youth, but mm -hmm. why he, he is pitching like it, I say ride him. Okay. That's all I wanted to make sure we got to from Friday. Big card, interesting card. Is there anything I didn't touch on that uh, you think was worth mentioning, Joe? Well, remember, Peter, I like to go with these highly touted pitchers who haven't necessarily done quite as much at the major league level as they have, mm -hmm. quote-unquote, on paper. Taiwan Walker would certainly be that very highly touted, but he's getting slapped around big time for Seattle. Again, it's not about whether a year from now he's going to be one of the best pitchers in baseball. We're talking about his next start, and I think he's in a great fade situation. Uh, you know, Milwaukee, I'm a little nervous. Wait, yes. let, let me just quickly uh, ask you. Yeah, see, that was, that's a very tricky one because, uh, yes, Walker has been shaky, but he has done well, better, at, at least, at home. And uh, this one will be at home. And then Sonny Gray on the other side. In general, I like him, but in this start, I'm not exactly sure. His last start was very weird. It was good. He threw 119 pitches, though. He had seven walks. That's very unlike him and very odd. And the fact that Taiwan Walker does have such bad stats overall in the year, but will be coming home and might do better at home with the protection of Safeco. I'm not exactly sure I'm, I'm so eager to jump all over uh, Oakland here or, or to expect Walker to get hit. D despite the fact that Sonny Gray's young, he certainly has enough of a track record to say that just because he had a so-so outing last time, I, I look for him to bounce back. He's, he's proven to be a stud in the case of, of Walker. Again, he's, he's shown that he has that proverbial great stuff but it hasn't resulted in in uh, looking like he can pitch at the major league level at this point yet. I also think they'll probably have a quick hook with him. Even if he mm -hmm. does pitch well, they're probably going to want to protect him. Let's just say right. he does throw a gem. I don't know if they'll have him pitch more than you know five or six innings, and that means they're going to have to go to the bullpen. So we'll probably disagree there, but it really you know depends. Uh, before the game starts, I'll certainly put in all my metrics before I make a final decision. But that's definitely my lean would be to say to keep fading him. Okay, and then you want to uh, mention Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee, they, they're turning it. They obviously got off to one of the worst starts in baseball. They've been at least decent as of late, but still Jason Hamill has pitched very well to them. Uh, Nathan Carnes has not pitched very well at Tropicana Field, so he would seemingly be a go against. And a guy that I know you're not a big fan of, Giovanni Gallardo, he's coming off of a game which he threw 118 pitches. So he's another one of those guys. Even if he does bounce back with a good outing, how many pitches does he have in him? They'll sure. probably go to the the bullpen early. And, uh, yeah, well, Matt Harvey, stud pitcher. The, the Mets, though, are trying to kind of ration his, uh, his innings, and he's pitching on an extra day rest, which is a second straight start that he did. But 
you know, how do you get value with, with Matt Harvey? So, but it is, but if you do like betting Matt Harvey, this might be a good situation for him because the Mets seem to be giving him that extra day rest just to make sure that uh, he can last the whole year. Okay, thanks so much, Joe.